So recently I made a tutorial on how to code wall running in Unity and we got it working. But to further improve it, you can still add wall jumping and a few other things. So yeah, let's get started. Open up your wall running script and add two floats for the wall jump up force and wall jump side force. Then you can create a new function called wall jump. And just as we did last time, you can save the wall normal, depending on whether the wall is on the left or right side. We can then easily calculate the force to apply by multiplying the upwards direction with the wall jump up force and adding the wall normal multiplied with the wall jump side force. Now you can apply this force by using rigidbody.addForce. Pass in the force to apply and use force mode.impulse. And as with any jump, I would recommend you to reset the y velocity of the player before you add the force. This way the jumping will feel clean even if you're currently falling. Also you need to call this function somewhere. So define a jump key and while you're in the wall running state, just call the wall jump function if you press this key. Okay, now you can switch back to Unity, set the values of the variables you created and hit play. And as you can see, the wall jump is working, most of the time. Sometimes you just can't exit the wall. And the reason for this is that currently you can do a wall jump, but then one frame later, if you're still close enough to a wall, you'll automatically enter the wall running state again. To fix this, let's create an exiting wall state. For this, you're going to need a bool called exiting wall, as well as two floats for the exit wall time and exit wall timer. Now just as you created the other states, open the state machine, add an else if statement and the condition is going to be the bool you just created. And if you are in the state, you want to cancel any active wall run. Now we only want to be in this exiting state for a short amount of time. So to implement that, just count down the exit wall timer and as soon as it reaches zero, set exiting wall to false, which will make sure that you exit the state. Now very important, you should not be able to start a wall run while you're trying to exit a wall. Okay, and now you can go back to your wall jump function and exit the wall by setting exiting wall to true and exit wall timer to exit wall time. Now back in Unity, set the exit wall time to something like this and there you go. The wall jumping feels now smooth and consistent. So now that you've implemented wall jumping, let me show you some more things to improve your wall run ability. The first one would be limiting your wall run time, because right now it's a bit weird since you can just wall run forever. So let's implement that. Go back to the wall running script and add floats for the max wall run time and the wall run timer. Now when you start a wall run, just set the wall run timer to the maximum. And while you're in the wall run state, make sure that the timer is counting down. Now whenever the timer reaches zero and you're currently wall running, you want to set exiting wall to true and start the exit wall timer. Now if you go back to Unity, set the variables to something like this and hit play, you can see that after a short time the wall run stops. And now in the last video I promised to explain how to use gravity when wall running, so let's implement that. Create a bool called use gravity and a float called gravity counterforce. Now whenever you set the rigid body's gravity, don't just set it to false and instead set it to use gravity. This way you can easily control in the inspector whether or not you want to use it. Also move this line up into the start wall run function because we don't want this to be called every frame. And also go back to your player movement script and make sure that this line only gets executed if you're not currently wall running. If you turn it on and hit play, it does work, but it's a bit too strong. So to weaken the gravity a bit, go back to your wall running movement function and if you are using gravity, apply a bit of counterforce. Now the higher you set the counterforce, the lower the effect of gravity will be. Just don't set it too high, unless you want to create a spaceship simulation.
And the last thing I want to show you is FOV changes and camera tilt. So open up your player cam script, whichever one you're using, and create functions for the FOV changes and tilting. Also, both functions should take in a float for the end value. Now you probably want the effects to fade in and out smoothly. And we could code that using math.lerp inside of a coroutine, but it's way easier to just use a great asset called doTween. So import it to Unity, go through the setup steps, and then you can add using dg.tweening to your cam script. Now thanks to this asset, the rest is super easy. Just get the component of the camera and use the do field of view function passing in the end value and 0.25 for the transition time. And for the tilting, you can use do local rotate and then just pass in the tilt on the z axis and again a transition time of 0.25. And now, one important change that you have to do is to create a transform for the cam holder and then here you want to rotate the cam holder instead of the camera. Otherwise, you're rotating the camera from two points in the script and it would be overriding itself. And back in your wall running script, you can now get a reference to your camera script and when you start a wall run, you can use the functions you just created to set the FOV and tilt to something like this. And don't forget to set them back to normal when you stop the wall run. Now assign the cam holder to the camera script and the camera to the wall running script. And there you go, you just coded a full wall run system with camera effects. Now before you click off, I just want to mention how you could further improve this code. So right now, you're still able to perform multiple wall jumps on the same wall. And sometimes the wall run timer runs out and you leave the wall, but then immediately start a new wall run because the game doesn't know that it's the same wall. To fix this, you would have to remember which wall you previously hit. But I'm not gonna show it here since it isn't that easy to code and I want to keep this tutorial short. But as always, you can download this entire project file over my Discord server. And there I set everything up, including what I just mentioned. But now, thank you so much for watching. If this tutorial has helped you in any way, make sure to leave a like in return, and also don't forget to subscribe for more amazing tutorials. See you next time.